Hey everyone, we're gonna wait a couple minutes here for everybody to get logged in. Let's see, we got about 28 people on here so far. Hey there, Neil. Good to good to hear from you, man. Hey everybody, it's actually JW. Uh, Paul is traveling. He has to get up early tomorrow, um, flying to Chicago. I'll, I go, I'll be flying out there myself. So I am handling this webinar tonight. So if it's not perfect, you can blame me. <laughs> hey Andrew, good to hear from you, man. Sorry, I haven't answered your calls the last two days. I've been super swamped with a couple house closing. Hey, Kevin, let's go. Francis, Jim, Andrew. Andrew, not yet. Um, about as soon as I get back from Florida or uh, Chicago next week, I'll be taking off. Um, the 31st, I'll be heading to Florida. I will be a resident of Florida on August 1st. Man, Rob Clear from Milwaukee. Well, we got lots of people in here from all over the place. All right, guys, I'm going to wait about another two more minutes and then I'm going to get this started. This is not going to be a super long uh, webinar for tonight. I, I wanted to do one at eight o'clock at night so that most most people that work can actually get on here. Um, the daytime one is hard for people to get off and uh, be able to attend. I'm going to go over some setups today on kind of the way Paul sets up his screen, how I use mine. And uh, we'll go through some of the settings. And some of you guys, if you want, you can. Um, I cannot run this webinar and read all the questions at the same time. Uh, so if I miss your question, I'll scroll back through it and take a look. Yeah, make sure everybody clicks panelists and attendees, or not everybody will see your messages. Hey, Damien, good to hear from you, man. Celeste. Hello, I will be in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, uh, right outside of Destin. Good, Jim. I'm glad you got to join us. Thank you, Damien. Andrew, for this one, I'm doing um, Trade Station. That's because we've got to have somebody that knows what they're doing with it, uh, trading on it. But I have been trading on, practicing on Ninja this week. Uh, I'm working pretty hard on that one. Yes, Richard, the meeting will be recorded. I'm going to hit record here in about three minutes. And... Um, Paul will post it on the Trade the Fifth website probably tomorrow. 9.5, Neil. I don't use 10. 
Um, and the reason why I don't is just because that's what OTA ingrained in my brain. And I've tried 10. It's all right. Um, it locked up just as much as 9.5 does. So I didn't see any advantage of going to it. About two more minutes. Guys, if you haven't gotten your, um, if you go to the, I posted it in Twitter, uh, a couple links for the um, new, Damien, our new customer success manager, taking care of all these installation things that when you have questions, he put together a really awesome uh, PDF handout. And you guys can send me a message on Twitter if you didn't get it, I'll, uh, after this webinar, I'll post a link to uh, both of them again. It's in my feed if you scroll through it. Yeah, Neil, it's a, it's a challenge uh, going from Trade Station to Think or Swim, but I think you're, you will enjoy the transition over it. It's a much smoother platform. I, I love it. Now, Hannah, um, the software is going to analyze whatever data is put into it. So it's not going to, like, if the numbers are off of whatever they report that comes through, it's going to analyze those numbers. All right, guys, I, we're pretty much stabilized on people on here. I'm gonna go ahead and start this video. There I am. What's going on guys? Got these fancy earphones on today. Let's see. Yes, Doug, I am in space. <laughs> That, uh, I like the background. That way you don't have to see my office. That uh, That's pretty cool. All right. I believe, let me make sure I got this thing recording. I've got three monitors and I'm not uh, very technically savvy on this. Let me drag it over here. All right, I'm pretty sure we are recording. All right, guys, I'm gonna go through a few things. I'm looking through your questions. <laughs> Jim, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think Bob and I go to the same uh, barber. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't have hardly anything packed either, Janine. <laughs> you know me. But uh, okay, guys, I'm going to go through, I want you, I'm going to go through a few things myself that I hear a lot about. And then I'm going to have you um, have you put your questions uh, and then I can try to answer them. You can put them in the chat box. Um, one of the things that I always get all the time is what kind of a setup do you use each day? And this is what Paul recommends and what he does when he's doing future trading. He has a screen set up on one workspace and I've named him down here at the bottom. You can see Paul 5.3 should be three five because I actually had this reversed earlier. 
Uh, he puts a three minute chart on the left with just an Elliott wave count, no other indicators on there. You can see it here, uh, what is this ES? This is dot D, so look for tomorrow. For a pullback, go down, maybe. That, uh, and then he's got on your bottom chart, he's got the same three minute, and the only thing he has on this one is black box breakout uh, in the EMA cloud that's on here. That way you have a really clean where you don't have too much information. Um, I know a lot of you guys, if you, um, hey, Kevin, good to have you on here. A lot of times when you put all the indicators on one screen, especially if you're trying to work off of a laptop, it becomes very like colluded on there where you can't concentrate on what's going on. And it, if you notice with this setup right here, it's very clean and very easy. Um, to see what's going on. Plus it also gives you where you can see the bars back for quite a while where you don't have it zoomed in where you're only looking, you know, to a small area and you can't see what the total price action has been all the way around. So you have a three minute and a five minute that uh, if, if you're trading, I know the rules say in training in uh, the same place that we all went, um, they say only go off larger time frames, and that is true. On the next set of charts, I have a 15 minute and a 30 minute, so you can look at those longer time frames. And you can always bounce around. You know what I mean? When you're in here, you can uh, put another workspace. I personally have. Let's see here. Let's go down here. I have JW's old school. This is what I used before I started using the Elliott Wave. Uh, and that's what I made all my decisions off of, Bollinger Percent B, RSI, all these other ones. And then I have a screen that also has the MTF dot cloud. Um, and you can see how this starts getting a little full on your screen when you put it all on there, your stochastics. Um, I know I've got some questions from people about the Qs and As that pop up up here instead of the arrows. It's something to do with TradeStation, and it's a only a very, 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 very few of you. It's a setting that we have not figured out that is in your computer somehow. Um, but what you can do on those is right-click on your arrow, and not the format text. Let me go back over here. You know, right-click on your screen format analysis technique. You're going to go to your false breakout format and draw arrows. You can put that to false and then those arrows won't be up, up there. Those are going to be changing. Um, those are just letting you know that you've gone past the 80, 80, 20 on your stochastic. Doesn't mean that's going to keep going up like this one here turned around and went down. That uh, it's just giving you an idea. Um, those may be changing here pretty soon on a new version coming out. But on the first one I'm gonna do is gonna be removing the labels, which on black box are right here. Removing or changing them, and I'll show you what I did to change mine. You're going to right click your chart, format analysis technique. That's awesome, Mark. Yeah, the, and the other thing, I actually have a little sticky note here that your Q&As are coming from the old version, and I know it's confusing because it says version three, because that was version three, and then the update that came out, came out in May was version one, and then version two, uh, he immediately had version two out right after that. So I get a lot of emails. They're like, JW, I don't have version three. I only have version two. And you have the right one. If it says May in your uh, build date, you have the right one. If yours says April, you have the outdated one on it. And make sure you delete it completely from your computer. Let me, I know I'm bouncing around over here, but let me show you how to take those off. You're going to go to is it edit view? Let me think where I had this hidden at the last time I was in here. So to 
phone in there, right? Yes. Then open. And this is where you can delete off your old Elliott Wave. Um, I recommend just deleting all of them off. If you're gonna do an update, I would uh, delete all of them. Literally, you just right click, hit delete. It'll take it off. Now, what we'll do, we'll do that again. It is view development environment, then click file, open. And there's your, uh, anything you've added on to TradeStation is in here. Just right click and delete. And you can delete off um, everything. And that's how you truly delete it completely away and off of TradeStation. Then you can download the fresh um, update that you have, load it on, and that way you don't have anything from the past, any kind of settings or anything like that. Now, will you have to go back through and put all your settings back in? Yes, but then you have the newest and freshest version. Kalu, what do you have? Thinkorswim platform as well. Yes, version two, I believe, is also for Thinkorswim on it. But let's go back to the black box breakout, or yeah, excuse me, black box breakout um, signals, how to change them. You're gonna right click on your chart, format analysis technique, black box breakout, you're gonna hit format, and show entry and exit labels. I have shot a video in the past that you guys have had. If you don't want um, these on here, the numbers, you can go in here, show entry and exit labels. You can put false, click okay, and the numbers go away. Now, if you're running everything on one screen, that was nice because it took the numbers away. But if you notice with mine, let's put them back on here. Put them back on here. They were originally like, I wanna say 14. Let's see how big it is. Yes. They were like really big numbers and covered them up. So what I did is I went in and changed them. I believe 10 is where I came out on your text size. That makes them easier to read and they don't cover up too much and you still have your exact numbers there. All right, that's one. We had removing labels. Another big one, guys, even though I've put it on Twitter like 800 million times. Uh, your start, I'll get a lot of emails that say, I don't have a wave count, I don't have a wave count. Sometimes there's not any waves, guys. Like Monday and Tuesday, uh, literally, I don't think there were any waves. I mean, it was. it's just been a low volume, not too much going on um, on there. So again, to do that start bar, right click your chart, format analysis technique, and Elliott Wave. You're going to format that and change that front one to one. Now, I believe in the new update that uh, Paul sent out on this, I believe it automatically comes as one. Um, and there will be an update coming out soon, uh, and that will automatically be at one. But if you're not seeing a wave count at all on multiple charts, make sure you go in there and check your start bar that it's at one. And then again on those uh, stochastic breakout arrows, those are they're not telling you to go long or to go short. They're just letting you know that the stochastic has crossed over 80% and it's going down or crossing over 20 and going up. Uh, it's just an indicator, you know, it's like a, another odds enhancer to your trade. Yes, Cluston, this is being recorded, or at least the little red dots blinking tell me it's being recorded. Uh, Paul will post this tomorrow on the tradethefifth.com website, so you'll be able to pull it there. Tomorrow, if not tomorrow, late tomorrow afternoon or the next morning, he'll definitely have it up and running. Awesome. We've got your Q&As. 
Another thing that I get a lot of that people will send me something. Let's go back over here to W5T. Uh, I'm going to mess this up on purpose and then I'll show you how to fix it. A lot of times you'll have your radar screen set up and you're clicking around, you're doing this, that, and another, and all of a sudden now your ESU is on a 15 minute chart. Well, if you try to adjust this, there is nothing in any of these and you'll go mentally insane trying to figure it out. And there's two different ways. You can either right click the symbol and hit format ESU 19. You can change that back to five minutes and voila, there you got it. Or if you happen to accidentally mess it up, you can literally just click on the box, go up here, hit your time frame, change it back to five minutes, click out of it, and you're good. All right. That was radar. Okay, guys, if you can put some questions for me in the chat box that you have questions about. I wasn't really going to go into a lot of trading stuff uh, on here. Uh, I am going to go through Paul's setups that he has on here, uh, but actual trades, uh, I'm not going to go through like individual ones. Um, but again, Paul has a three minute five minute on one workspace, a 15 and a 30. And then he calls it his matrix done where you have your matrix, your radar box, uh, scanner box, whatever you want to call it with your symbols in there. And then like a trade manager. He, Paul likes to have everything in one place. Um, I typically will enable the status bar uh, or position graph where it's up here when I have a trade but it is nice having it over here for open orders. Yeah, Andrew, I like it way better on, uh, Thinkorswim is just a very user-friendly platform that, I mean, in my opinion, um, it's an open source language, so it's very um, easy to do what you want to do in it. Um, TradeStation tends to, they have regulations and stuff of what they'll let you do and not do. So it makes it harder. That's why that radar box uh, over here, it's maybe not as fancy looking as um, Thinkorswim. I like Thinkorswim's because it auto populates the entire futures field on there. And even though you may not be trading, I think there's what, 55, 60 uh, future symbols that are in there. It's kind of nice because if all the metals, if you have copper, um, silver, gold, if you start seeing, um, I, I keep mine on think or swim. I've got literally a two, a three, a four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, and 60 uh, in there, which is crunching a lot of info. But when you start seeing black box breakouts on multiple time frames kind of gives you an idea, hey, something's going on in the metals or something's going on, uh, you know, with the ES, NASDAQ, Dow, you know, they're all kind of going in the same direction today. Um, it kind of gives you like an idea of, hey, you need to peek into this area. Yes, Cleston, it could be programmed the same way in Thinkorswim. Jim, let me look on here. ESU. Five minutes. All right, I don't see it on mine, but let's see it on last signal short term and stop it. Okay, um, Jim, what that signal is, I'm getting so many questions on here, it's popping down. What that signal is, is it's telling you when it pops up, it's saying there's a possible short at 29.8175. Uh, 
um, with a suggested stop loss. And that stop loss is depends on your trading plan. And, you know, it depends on how much money you've got in your account, how much you can risk, what your risk tolerance is. Um, you know, you make that decision that that's a suggested stop loss um, is not something set in stone. It's something that you got to make that final decision on. Um, and that signal is going to stay there until it, it basically goes away where it's not good anymore. It will not show up in that radar box. Like over here, it'll say, like you just said, short whatever on this side. Whenever that actually, uh, it, may, it may, may pass that up. Like for instance, this one right here, 29.90.75. That one popped up. Once another one popped up down here, it's going to go away. After a while, it's just going to disappear completely off because it's no longer relevant. We, we're beyond it. The time frames expired uh, on it. Richard, um, I mean, Trade Station 10 looks cool, but 9.5, um, I'm an ABC one, two, three kind of person. And even though I cuss it up and down one side and another on 9.5, um, it's very ABC one, two, three. And I think that's uh, why a lot of people still use it. I am uh, really liking Ninja Trader uh, so far. Uh, and I absolutely love Thinkorswim. The, uh, Thinkorswim is my favorite out of all of them. I do not have, I don't think I have any videos uh, for Think or Swim, Kevin. Uh, not yet. I've pretty much about maxed out Trade Station. So I'll start working on some of those Think or Swim ones uh, after I get moved to Florida. How do you do a dot D chart on Think or Swim? Uh, Andrew, uh, I don't have that pulled up right now. Um, you basically click the little bottom right arrow uh, where the like the plus and minus button is down on the bottom right. Click that. Um, the first little bottom, like edit, and then go to futures, and then it'll be a box that you uncheck um, for show um, the night session. You uncheck that, and then that way you'll have a dot D chart after that. The dot cloud, Caleb, I, uh, I literally, all the dot cloud is, it's just like another odds enhancer. Um, let me see here if I can, I shrunk this up to make the screen a little bit bigger. Let me see if I can, there we go. All right, on this dot cloud, if, and these are all pretty red right now, Let's do dot cloud. All right, we're on 15, 20. All right, these settings are for a 10 minute chart. Make sure you guys have your chart. And one of the things of saving, um, okay, now this dot cloud's accurate because it's on a 10 minute chart. If you have multiple uh, workspaces open with a time frame, uh, it's hard with a dot cloud. If you're constantly flipping through, which I do a lot, I go through different time frames. The that dot cloud's not going to be accurate because, like this one, set for a ten minutes. So if I'm on a five, it's not right. If I'm on a fifteen, it's not right. Thirty, etc. Uh, but how I do it with when you're going through. Basically, what it's telling you on multiple time frames above, so on a 10 minute, it's telling you a 15, a 20, and a, a 30 time frames where it's at that, hey, most of them, it's looking short, indecisive, going long. Um, I don't make complete decisions from it. It's just, you know what I mean? If we've been solid red, solid red, solid red, and then all of a sudden, we're going yellow, 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 and then we start seeing some green, green, green. Well, you know, and it, it kind of looks like it's probably going to start going green. Um, but by the time that comes around, 
I mean, you're already going to know between your EMA cloud, your six four moving average, um, and just from trading, you're going to know that you know, hey, there's a, a swing. You're going to be looking at your bigger time frames, sixty minute, thirty minute, fifteen minute. You're going to know something's going on. All right, Rob, let me see here. Jeff, you cannot transfer your license because it's a, a digital product. Once it's issued uh, for that platform that you can't change it uh, or return it, I guess. Um, reach out to me, Jeff. I can um, typically get you a discount on the second set, uh, quite a bit of a discount since you already have the first one. Rob, what do you got in here? More details on the five minute chart on the click analysis commentary. All right, let's do that. All right, typically, let's go to a little bit higher time frame. Typically, you want to go to yesterday's higher low. So let's see here. That's probably about the high right there. So if you wanted to isolate this wave count, on trade station on 9.5 the analysis commentary button is right here you come over and you literally just click the top of that make sure you click the x when you're done and that isolates the wave count now this it already it didn't change in any um wave count was accurate now on some it'll also be on your view button down to analysis commentary on TradeStation 10, you're not going to see this button unless you change your toolbars uh, to classic. Um, it'll have the option in here on toolbars. On TradeStation 10, if you change it to classic, then you'll have your analysis commentary button up here. Yeah, guys, Doug, Doug's a master of this, man. Uh, he actually spent about an hour with me the other night, Doug. I really appreciate that. Uh, shared his screens of how he uses them. He, he's more advanced and way more advanced than I am. I'm ABC123. He's rocket science, man. He's got it up there. <laughs> Jim, what do you got in here? Would you enter short only after it's indicated wave four has been hit? Um, if you watch the video, Jim, that what Paul says is once it's pulled back into the green, it's an 85% success rate when it comes back out and completes the fifth wave. If it goes into the amber, it's an 80. Red is 75%. But we all know that the market will do whatever the market wants to do. Uh, sometimes it'll pull up in here. You do not go short back out of here. Like say we pulled up in here and we came back out. You're not going to get short until you're below that 6-4 moving average. So you're not going to get short until right here. I mean, it just hypothetically speaking, this went up and was coming back down. You don't get short in here. You wait until you're below this and below your EMA cloud uh, before you make that decision of where you're at. You know, I don't know, Richard, if uh, I'm sure Paul would, um, I mean, nine point, all the indicators load exactly the same. There's just a different DLL file that you got to load initially to make it load right on 10 and then everything else is the same so it's it, the believe it or not the back uh end of trade station is really i don't think it's that much different uh on 10 than it they just make it look cooler <laughs> you guys cracked me up with uh so your comments and stuff on there Yes, anonymous attendee, just click uh, click that box. You have to immediately click that box. You can't click anywhere else, so you'll mess up that analysis commentary. Now, one word of caution, I will tell you. 
do not keep clicking that analysis commentary button and click it all over your screen that every time you do that, it is going back and measuring the bars back and you will max out your memory like very, very, very quickly. Uh, and then you'll, your system will seem like it's running slow or you maybe get one of those pop-up boxes that says that you either run out of memory or too many executions going on at the same time or something to that effect. Um, save, save any changes you've made, close the system down. And let me show you guys how to clear your cache. That uh, you're gonna hit your Windows Start button, Documents, and then you're gonna click Local Disk, then Program Files x86, and then you'll see Trade Station 9.5, click it. Then you're gonna go to Program, and there's your cache, and you just right click it and delete it. I can't delete it now because Trade Station is running, it's gotta be shut down. When you do it, make that a habit of yours every single day before you open Trade Station. When you're like, hey, I'm gonna open up Trade Station, make that your first thing you do. Uh, you'll have a much smoother running platform because there's just so much information, especially if you have three or four uh, workspaces open. Now, guys, I will tell you too, I would not have, you know, 10 workspaces down here going. A, uh, a lot of people that I've remoted in, they'll have their old setups from the uh, school on there, and then they'll have something else they were messing around with, and something else, and then they put all the workspaces for LA. You need to get rid of all those things. There's no way in the world you can scan through all those at the same time anyways in live time and actually be accurate. Uh, try to break it down to just A, B, C, one, two, three, man. Like as much as you can get with just one click uh, to see more information is way better. Um, you don't need a bunch of workspaces on here eating up your system memory. William, uh, the benefit of adjust, readjusting the wave count. Let's say um, we've had like a big gap down or something similar like that that it, uh, or like on a Monday that, you know, the market's been closed for two days, um, big gap up, big gap down, crazy volume, just jumping all over the place. It, it resets the bar count so that you have an accurate bar counts. Like sometimes there may not show a Elliott wave on there when there actually is like we're close to one, you just don't see it because the bar count, it's counting, all the bars from five days ago. So it's going five trading days back. When if you isolate it on Monday, it's gonna be just recent. So then it lets you know what's going on from that candle forward. Now the only thing on TradeStation, let me show you something. Uh, to do that, if you pick um, wherever it's at, don't forget to Put your start bar back to zero if you change it because I've had some people um, change it and they'll put this at like bar 200 or whatever it may be and then the next time they log in it's starting at bar 200 and it's not accurate or they click on a different symbol and it's counting from that one there now if you use the analysis commentary button it doesn't matter it goes away the next time you do it that's one nice thing about it using trade station. Kevin, I'm not sure what a motive wave is for Elliott wave charting. Yeah, Dave, that's great, man. That it does make a big difference when you clear that cash out. Yeah, Neil, the um, the black box breakout uh, indicators, I mean, they're just indicators. They're saying that, you know, this, this, and that lined up in a possible short or a possible long. Yeah, I'm always going to take an Elliott wave um, over a black box. But some days, you know, it might go range bound for a day and a half. Um, it'll come up into this green, red 
amber area and just go range bound for two days. Uh, and that's where some breakout uh, indicators come in handy to make a little money, pull some profit out of the market during those times. Hey, Richard, uh, yeah, the Elliott wave is up top and you can see the wave count there, there's a two. And we back here somewhere is a one. Somewhere that uh, there's a one way back in there. And then black box breakout is on the bottom. Buffer memory overload. You guys getting technical on me. Rob, uh, fifteen minute chart on which on ES. OSC zone negative one. Would you say about five thirty? Should be somewhere right around here. My guess right there. Yeah, it doesn't matter, Sean, if you do yesterday's high or low, it'll give you the same number. OSC, this is a 30 minute chart over here, Rob. Robert, are you talking about the, the open and the close? I'm not sure what you're talking about, Rob, sorry. Five days back, Elizabeth, that uh, five days back on those. Yeah, Neil, I, I agree too. Um, I agree uh, completely with Paul, and that's one thing I've realized. Um, I've become a very, very patient trader now. Um, I used to kind of just take off, uh, kind of making trades like a machine gun. Uh, and now I sit very patiently, and if things do not line up and look good, uh, I won't take it. Like for instance, on this ES uh, chart right here, that, let me blow this up real quick. And get this thing out. That we've had some nice, big, long moves down. You know what I mean? It's not, uh, it's not like a real quick, just boom, boom, boom. And then the fifth wave is right here again. Um, I like these big moves like this. These are nice. Uh, like this will be on my radar screen uh, tomorrow. I would, I don't know if we'll pull up here. I don't know. We may, we may pull up here tonight. Sometime tomorrow, I think we'll pull up in here and, uh, and then maybe come back down on, on a nice fifth wave move down. Now this is on a 30 minute chart though. Um, I like when I do find a Elliott wave, that one was on uh, 30. Uh, I'll go through, check it out on a 60, uh, check it out on four and say, I, I like this because it's on a four minute chart. Um, let's see if it's on a five. 
it's on a five. So my, my rules, and this is just me personally, uh, if it's not on at least five, four to five of the time frames, I don't like taking it. So let's go down to a two. All right, so we have it on a two. We have it on a three. We have it on a four. We have it on a five. So this right here is qualifying in my book that I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled on this one. Uh, Cause this is gonna be a good, I personally think this is gonna be a good uh, fifth wave out when it goes. It's on a 10, so now we're on five time frames. Uh, this is a perfect example right here of not taking one where it's just boom, 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 and it's out. Uh, look how choppy that was, man. If you would have followed the rules and got out uh, below the six four moving average, pulled right back up that I mean yeah if hopefully you would have gotten yourself out of there and got some money but it would have stopped you out back out and just sideways I mean look at it never even hit the target I don't like these small ones like this I like the nice big long moves like this these are nice 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 moves on it so we're on five time frames on 10 minute let's go to come on let's go to 15 don't have it on the 15. Doesn't mean it's out. 20 minute. Don't have it on there. And the 30 minute. So in my rule book, I think it's a strong fifth wave move coming up because it's on five of those lower time frames. It's even better when it's on one of the higher time frames or all of the higher time frames. Like tomorrow, uh, very easily, those other couple that didn't hit or that don't show it yet. Um, that we may end up painting that picture tomorrow morning or overnight. Um, this looks like a really good move, guys. Yep. All right. Let's go. Put that like to a thirty. Good job, Elizabeth. Less than seven candles on the fourth wave. Andrew, I don't really, I'm going to, I'll be honest with you. I don't isolate very often. Um, I let it do what it's going to do. Um, if I don't have any Elliott waves, then I may isolate. Um, I kind of like to go between the uh, overnight session, the just the regular ESU, and then the dot D. Uh, sometimes you can find opportunities on the over the Globex one that may show um, a fifth wave move that's not on your dot D chart especially on a Monday because you don't have as much data like the other one does. God, you guys are quiet tonight. What happened? Did I put you all to sleep? It's been my first time hosting one of these and everybody went to sleep on me. <laughs> all right, guys, what other questions do you have on here? Yeah, Neil, I wish I was there with you. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Jim, I don't, uh, I do not isolate my wave count. That uh, so when it's on a thirty minute. It's just on 30 minute, man. But uh, whatever it pops up, whatever it pops up. Gene, Mike, Michael, I hope you get to feeling better. Yes, anonymous attendee, uh, make sure you close out the window after you hit the analysis commentary. Yes, Jim, your wave count should always start at one in that box. When you uh, edit analysis technique, make sure that start bar is at one. Yeah, Brian, um, that 5K club, um, everybody uh, that's on, I've got quite a few people on here that uh, Paul started that 5K club and that actually came from talking to students that, you know, if you have not built your account up to a larger amount where you can trade 
10, 15, 20, 30 contracts, uh, a lot of people only have a $5,000 account that they're working with and they kind of get a little stressed out trying to figure out, well, how do I make money with just one contract? It's kind of hard to have the vision to see the future on it. And Paul is putting together, he's going to do a minimum of two live trainings a month, may end up doing more, may not, uh, or, you know, may do three, may, could be four, but it's a minimum of two per month. It's $5 a month. Uh, you pay the year, it's 60 bucks for the year and you get two live trading days and he will go through possible trades. Like he's going to go through the market, uh, scanning through all the different symbols. Uh, now he's not, he's going to be doing, you know, five or seven different symbols, ES, NASDAQ, Dow, oil, gold, stuff like that. And giving you potential trades of what he would do. And the cool thing about it is he's going to go through how he analyzed that trade. What, you know, this says that, this said that, and this is why I'm going to take the trade. It's a pretty cool deal that's coming out. Yeah, Brian, um, we're working on that it, it, on the on the Wave 5 alert. Uh, it would actually be a Wave 4 once it painted a Wave 4. Um, that's that's in the works. Let's put it that way. It's, it, it's in the works. Uh, Hopefully soon. Can't reveal all the information, but hopefully soon. Uh, Andrew, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, the market is the market, man. It can do whatever it wants to do. Like, um, I don't know. We can keep going. I mean, you can literally just go back. Market's going to go sideways or do whatever. I mean, those are thirty-minute candles. Now we went up. Uh, but look how long we went sideways that uh, before it finally took off down. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to it, uh, pulling up in here that uh, we got to break through the six, four moving average first and get up in here. Then we got, it's going to come down and that six, four is going to be some, uh, there's a lot of sell off today. And I, I think uh, we got a lot of gaps down below. So I, I think that, uh, we'll get it. I think we'll get a rally back up in there, and then I think we'll have a nice wave five down, but you never know. <laughs> Brian, you have ADD and hate scanning. <laughs> you and I have the same brain, man. Yes, that uh, you can use the Elliott wave, Sean, on just about any symbol. We haven't decided yet, Taylor. Um, it's probably going to be, I don't know. We haven't decided yet on that. All right, guys. I appreciate everybody taking the time to come out tonight and uh, break me in for the first uh, webinar. Hopefully it's not the last one. Uh, you know, put some uh, good, uh, good uh, comments uh, about it. Um, I promise I'll try to be better in the future um, and have some more content for you. I just didn't know what to do uh, on here for you. So I hope I answered some of you guys' question. Yes, Sean, the move is official. It's done. Paper signed on the house. Uh, literally, it'll be there the first. Thanks, Doug, Gustavo, Sean, everybody. Thank you. Janine, Elizabeth, Damien. Very soon, Damien. Very soon, my friend. <laughs> yes, Cluster. If you got any questions, man, just message me on Twitter and I'll I'll answer anything for you. Thanks, Dawson. All right, guys. You have a good night.